Hey boy, Rook 85 here. Uh, last couple videos I put up were shotgun slug guns. We had the Browning uh, Deer Hunter Gold uh, shotgun, the auto loader that was shot by Syntex 77 that he'll be using for our upcoming Delaware Deer season that starts on November 8th. And I was shooting the Mossberg 500 with the converted barrel, the slug barrel. And I uh, was shooting the Lightfield slugs. I uh, never shot those before. Interesting, uh, from what I've heard. Uh, but uh, if you noticed on the Mossberg 500, it did not have a scope. And I was muzzleloader hunting uh, the last, or actually it was the first week of October. And uh, did have the opportunity to take a couple shots. Uh, but I think the... The sight picture, and, and as far as my age and my eyes, uh, kind of felt that I needed a scope on on a rifle. So uh, I went up to the uh, local shop to see what they had, and they just happened to have the Savage Model 220 in 20 gauge, which is sitting here in front of me. It's basically a white-tailed deer rifle uh, for shotgun-only states like we have here in Delaware. A lot of other places here in the Northeast and uh, out West in some other places uh, are shotgun only. Uh, I'm sure this would be uh, highly coveted out there in those states for the longer ranges. Uh, again, here in Delaware, we do have some long range shots. Uh, the particular farm that uh, uh, we hunt on uh, does not have a lot of sh longer shots, but just having the scope gave me a little bit of uh, comfort with the uh, black powder season that we had. I uh, thought I saw a buck uh, in the trees. Uh, I couldn't quite make it out. I did not have binoculars with me, which I should have. And if I had this, I might have been able to take a shot. So uh, it probably got me thinking about having a scope on here and having something that uh, I would really feel comfortable in. So I went out and got the, uh, the Savage again. Uh, the action is based off the Savage 110. Uh, the 220 here, this is the 220 and 20 gauge, uh, has a pillar uh, bedded action, nice uh, one piece stock. Let's take a quick look. Nice one piece stock, basically a rifle looking stock on it. Uh, free floating barrel. Uh, this one has the matte finish, so the actually the scope I have on it, or they put it on it at the store, uh, and the barrel is matte finish. Uh, unpolished carbon blue steel and it does have the old style and some call a bit on the ugly side right here up in the front I'll try to get a zoom in on it uh, so you can take a look but it has the uh, the old style uh, barrel attachment nut which is uh, which is right here it does have the uh, camo synthetic camo stock on here uh, I think it does help uh, it take a look a little bit better uh, from the straight black ones that I've seen pictures of and I've seen a couple of videos of uh, but it does look uh, fairly nice with this uh, camo stock on it. Uh, it does have a two round detachable magazine. Uh, let's go ahead and take that out. And here it is right here. And again, two round detachable magazine. Uh, so basically you have a two round Two, two rounds gun. It's not really a two plus one as far as one in the barrel and two. It's really only two uh, only. You really have one in the barrel and one left uh, in the magazine here, uh, which certainly uh, works for me. I mean, uh, for you, th those of you that have deer hunted, uh, having those many shots, sure, there's always the opportunity that you do, but 90% you're never going to get that third follow-up shot on on a deer maybe unless you have wounded it and crippled it and uh, it's going slow for some reason so I'm not I'm comfortable with this and again this is plastic would have rather have it maybe maybe made out of aluminum I would have liked it a little bit better uh, but uh, we'll just go ahead and deal with what we have have uh, does have the uh, already has the uh, swivel uh, sling mounts or for your sling in here uh, your swivel studs. So I'm going to go ahead and put a sling on this. Uh, it does have a 124 uh, twist rate in the barrel. 
Uh, so it is really a rifle by definition, uh, not a smooth bore shooting your foster slugs, but uh, basically a rifle, but of course it is a 28 shotgun. So uh, one nice feature on this, uh, we have the uh, Accu trigger, and I do have it on safe right now, and it is of course unloaded. Check all firearms before doing any videos. Here's a close-up of the trigger, uh, the Accu trigger. As again, you can see the, the vented piece of it uh, that will depress and once it reaches full that's when your safety mechanism will disengage and you can go ahead and activate the firing pin so that is a little bit nice so if you have younger children uh, and you're worrying about safety wise uh, of course they would have to push this all the way in till they get to the trigger and then go ahead and discharge so that's uh, so actually one certainly one nice feature about it and let's go ahead and actually do that trigger pull on here. Go ahead and put it off. Of course, it is unloaded. And I got 3.134. So you can see it's going about. Uh, 3, 3.1, 3 3.2, 3.13, uh, so certainly happy uh, with that. I'm not going to make any adjustments uh, to the trigger. Uh, and again, it has that nice Accu trigger in there, so I'll be looking forward to using that. And it does have the uh, three position safety right here. So thumb activated, so you can have your, your finger down here at the ready and your thumb right, uh, right there to activate the safety. And of course, this is your full safe position. You have a three position safety. Uh, position two. Uh, position two right here. Uh, we'll be able to work the bolt, but not actually pull the trigger. And then of course you have your full fire position right here. So a nice three position safety. Uh, so if you did want to unload it, uh, unload the cartridge out, maybe you took the box uh, magazine out and then went ahead and unloaded it, you could just put it on that uh, safety number two position and go ahead and work that bolt uh, without worrying about uh, being able to hit the trigger by accident and discharging the weapon. Get a nice close-up of the, uh, the bolt itself and, and the action. Uh, as you can see, big bolt swings up high. But uh, certainly hope that will uh, will do exactly what we need it to do uh, when the time comes. And uh, also has a pretty good uh, pretty good recoil pad here on the end. Uh, very 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 soft. Uh, and I, I did take this to the range. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, it does have a Conus. I think it's Conus Pro. Uh, 3 by 10 by 44 scope one here. Not particularly, uh, we'll just put delighted with this particular scope. Uh, again, it was on here uh, from the store, it came as a package deal. And uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and take this off. It's actually a muzzle loader scope that they put on here. Probably going to take it off and put it on a new muzzle loader for next year and most likely uh, put a Nikon on there. And one good feature about the scope, it does have a, a red-blue dot uh, in, in the reticle itself. You still have the, uh, the normal reticle lines on it, but it does have a, either a red or blue dot that you can turn on the center for, for low light. And uh, when I did have it up the range, I did use the, the red dot, and it actually worked pretty well. Uh, the, uh, the particular reticle bars are not real thick in this. And that red dot actually helped uh, get on the target for me. So again, I'm probably going to be switching it out to a nicer Nikon next year or some other type model, something that I have a, a uh, maybe just a little bit better. And, and of course, uh, if it does work out this year, maybe I won't do a thing to it. And again, it does have the uh, the uh, synthetic stock. Uh, it weighs about seven and a half pounds, so it's really not that bad for a shotgun. You, if you know some of the other shotguns, uh, may go up into the eight pound, eight and a half, almost nine pound, and then when you put a scope on it a lot, uh, 
overall length for this is about the, I think I measured it, it was actually 43 and a half inches. I think it says a little bit more online, but uh, I came down to about 43 and a half inches, which is nice. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and put this down for a sec. And I did take it up to the range uh, and was able to sight in the scope. Uh, very easy shooting. Uh, I think the the stock design helps with that, and that recoil pad that I was mentioning really, really is uh, really lessens the blow. And of course, it is a 20 gauge. It's not like shooting a 12 gauge. So uh, certainly uh, within the specs of uh, having a, a light shooting uh, a shotgun. Uh, one thing we do I do want to show you is let's take a look at this bolt, the bolt action on it. And again. And as you can see, pretty pretty lengthy slide on there. And again, of course it would be for a 20 gauge shell. Uh, one thing uh, that uh, you do want to know, it is not this bolt does not have a spring in it. So when you actually work the bolt back, uh, your your shell isn't going to go flying out like you're used to uh, a lot of the other rifles. Your your shell goes uh, certainly out of the way. If you, especially if you pull it back slow. Uh, it's just going to basically sit in here, so you either have to kind of dump it out like this, or work it like that, and it will come out for you. And it's not going to go flying, it's not going to go far, but it will just drop out. So you do have to remember, you don't want to hold it like this. And again, if you're taking a shot, and you, and you come down, most likely you're going to be in this position anyway. You're not going to kind of have it on an angle like that. Uh, so I didn't see it a problem when I was going ahead and sighting it in. Uh, but uh, that's just one thing you want to you want to keep in mind with that. Uh, let's go ahead and take the bolt all the way out on this. And uh, as you can see, pretty pretty hefty bolt there. That's a pretty good sized bolt that you have to work. Um, I, again, I shot about, uh, I think I shot about two boxes of shots, about ten shots. Uh, it didn't really take me long to get this sighted in. Uh, as far as accuracy goes, I was very impressed. Uh, again, this was an indoor range, so uh, as far as distance, I certainly didn't get to go out to 100 yards or anything like that. But uh, the distances that I shot was certainly, uh, you know, I was putting shot after shot on top of each other, clover leafing it out. Let's take a couple. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, what comes with it. Uh, of course, we have the, the normal NRA. Help the NRA fight for you. And I'm not going to go into politics or anything like that. But I am a life member of NRA, and uh, there there are very few uh, organizations that are going to support your firearms uh, hobbies. As far as we we do them, if you're looking at this, you're you're a firearms enthusiast, a hunter. Uh, I certainly uh, would recommend joining the NRA. Uh, you don't have to do the life membership, of course, but uh, I certainly uh, would uh, recommend uh, joining the NRA. Of course, the uh, a safety book, and again, firearm safety depends on you. I think we all know that. There's no, no need to be reckless. Uh, little 212, 220. And again, you can get this in 12 gauge. It's the 212 model. And here I have the uh, the 220. Really, just tells you a little bit about the Accu trigger and the recommended ac ammunition, which I was going to get to, which uh, oh, I have here is the the Remington uh, Premier Accu tips. I'm going to show a little bit uh, about those in a few seconds. Of course, the uh, the manual bolt action shotguns. Uh, a lot of it goes through and uh, tells you just uh, about the everything and then a little bit of uh, advertising for Savage Arms knives. I uh, have a little browning knife over here which I certainly prefer better. This is a this is a great little knife this browning. So I did use the Remington Accu tips. Uh, that was one of the recommended a uh, ammunition. Let's see what else it had in there. Uh, let's see here. That's not the right book. Uh, for the 20 gauge, uh, the Barnes Expander 3 inch, 
uh, the Rem Remington AccuTip, either two and three quarters or three inch. Now I chose the the two and three quarters on this. Uh, you don't get a, a lot, lot more out of the the three inch. Uh, they they do say maybe maybe more accurate because uh, it's a little bit far up and it doesn't have to the actual sabot doesn't have to travel as far before it engages into the rifle grooves. Uh, so, uh, but I chose the two and three quarters. Uh, still has a good good heavy slug. Uh, the, it is. Let's take a look. What is it? Uh, two hundred fifty grain slug. Going at uh, 1850 feet per second out of out of the muzzle velocity, so that's uh, actually just a tad more than the Hornady SSTs that I use for the 12 gauge. Of course, the 12 gauge is is a little bit more than that, but uh, uh, was was pretty impressed by them. Uh, as far as again as shooting, I was really putting shot after shot on top of each other, and uh, a couple of shots I almost couldn't tell the where where it hit I knew I hit the paper of course but uh, it was almost going in, into the same hole so uh, again very impressed uh, one thing you do have to do if you get one of these uh, you look down the barrel it's like oh boy that looks nice and clean out of the factory well I uh, I ran some CLP through it uh, as I would any new firearm before I, I fired it and you wouldn't believe the preservative that they had in there you couldn't really see it but uh, but that cleaning rag came out unbelievably brown uh, and uh, had a lot of that, that preservative on there. So you want to get that all out before you go ahead and sight this in because I actually think that may may uh, kind of I think uh, take away a little bit from the accuracy. So uh, you definitely want to go ahead and clean this out good before you uh, fire it for the first time. Again, the barrel looks clean, but it's it's really not. It has that uh, the preservative that the company puts on it and uh, you want to go ahead and use that. So again, uh, use the uh, the Remington Premier AccuTips and as I like to do, uh, cut one of these open so you can take a good look. So let me uh, let me get the zoom going on this and uh, we'll take a look at uh, at the old Remington AccuTip and uh, and see what that's all about. Again, I was impressed haven't actually had a chance to harvest anything with it. So I, I can't uh, tell you the effect on a deer-sized target, but uh, as far as shooting, I uh, was certainly impressed by them. So let's zoom in a little bit. And here we have the, uh, the, the Remington Premier AccuTip. It uh, has a PowerPoint tip on it. Get good expansion on these from what uh, I've read from either 5 to 150 yards with the 20 gauge and from 5 to 200 with the 12 gauge. So certainly, uh, uh, I won't be shooting 200 yards uh, where I hunt, but uh, for those of you out west or in some of the other spots uh, on a farm, uh, a 200 or 150 yard shot uh, could be a possibility for you. So uh, certainly the, these new Sabbat slugs, whether it's the, the Remington or the Hornady SSTs or uh, a couple of the other types, certainly are putting slug guns uh, into almost a rifle type accuracy. Uh, the 20 gauge has a 45 caliber slug so it's uh, it's not bad going uh, as far as what you're shooting out of there certainly shooting more than my 308 does and it is made uh, the slug jackets made from high strength brass and uh, and again it's designed for fully rifled barrels uh, like this one only. Uh, so I did cut this one apart and of course we have our sabot and Let's get our slug out of here so you can take a look at it. And it has the green plastic tip right here, this green plastic tip. And then comes down into the normal, again we have our brass and of course uh, lead. So uh, 250 grain. Uh, see if I can zoom in even a little bit closer on this. So yeah, that nice big 250 grain slug, and uh, to me it seems like it should do, do plenty of damage. Uh, we're going to get a pass through on this, so that's certainly what we want when we're hunting deer sized targets. So here is again the Savage, uh, this 220, again in 20 gauge, uh, bolt action slug gun for those slug uh, only states that I particularly live in. 
put a couple of these things away here. And again, nice size, nice weight, uh, good balance on it. And again, if you're thinking, wow, bolt action shotgun, that thing must be, uh, again, five and a half feet long and heavy as anything. Uh, of course, our weight uh, in at uh, seven and a half pounds. Uh, of course, the scope adds a little bit, the scope and the rings. Uh, the length, again, I measured it out to 43 and a half. Uh, so, actually, not that bad. I just happen to have my 308 down here. Maybe so we can do a little bit of comparison. As you can see, here's my 308. And so, actually, not that much difference uh, between the two as far as size comparison goes. Uh, they're almost, uh, almost the same. Certainly be, I'd be able to tote this around in the woods uh, comfortably, having an either uh, elevated deer stand or blind or box stand, whatever I happen to be in. Uh, so uh, this will certainly uh, fit the bill as far as uh, the Delaware deer season. And uh, certainly look forward to uh, a good one coming up. I uh, have seen some nice deer when I was muzzle loading. Uh, I did have a miss failure on a cap, uh, so I wasn't able to uh, get a chance at a doe. But uh, that, that happens when you're when you're hunting muzzle loader and you have a cap lock, and sometimes it just happens. So uh, did see some nice ones. Uh, let some go. I was hoping that a buck would come in, so I let some doe go. But uh, that's uh, that's hunting basically. It's uh, it's the of course, in Delaware, it's a good way to hunt. You have a chance to to harvest uh, a bigger animal, something that, uh, something that that you really really want. The Savage 220, 20 gauge slug gun. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a video firing this. Uh, I may bring it up uh, when we go up to Pennsylvania uh, hunting season, the end of November, and when we're sighting in. And I'll be using, of course, the 308 in uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, I may bring this up to do some some other shooting and another video up there. I, I have a feeling I'll be doing that. So uh, stay tuned for that. This is White Ruck 85 signing out from the Delmarva Peninsula, getting ready for the storm, whether it's Hurricane or Tropical Storm Sandy that will be coming up the coast uh, within the next few days or should be on top of us by the time I post this video. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, from that. So everybody take cover.